Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today, uh, we are strapping ourselves in, metaphorically speaking, because we're tackling an object that's, well, it's stirred up quite a bit online. Hmm. Three I at least. Yeah, it really has. It's the third confirmed interstellar visitor to our solar system, hmm. which is inherently fascinating, right? An actual interloper. Totally. But, you know, the fascination turned into anxiety for some. Mm -hmm. Especially with claims, particularly on platforms like X, suggesting it's somehow changing course, yeah. maneuvering towards Earth even. Exactly. And that's our mission for this deep dive. Cut through that hype. We're going straight to the data, the real sources, NASA, JPL, astronomical observations to figure out the actual probability of this thing changing its path and, you know, becoming a threat. It's about separating the, uh, the science from the social media speculation. Absolutely. So where do we start? What's the baseline from the experts? Okay, well, the nominal, sort of the standard predicted closest approach for 3 ILA, that's set for December 19th, 2025. And how close is closest? It's projected at 1.8 astronomical units, AU. So about 270 million kilometers away. That's, yeah. that's a pretty comfortable distance. Right, 1.8 AU is way out past Mars's orbit, isn't it? But people here, closest approach and... Uh, Maybe picture something different. That's fair. There's another number that's important here. The MOID, minimum orbit intersection distance. Okay, MOID A, what does that represent? Think of it like this. You trace Earth's path and you trace 3 Ilesis path. The MOID is the absolute minimum distance between those two paths, um, geometrically speaking. Gotcha. And for this object? It's currently calculated at 0.36 AU, so around 54 million kilometers. 54 million kilometers. Yeah. So even if, theoretically, Earth and the comet arrived at those closest points at the same time... Which is highly unlikely. It's still nowhere near an actual collision. Miles away. Millions of miles. Exactly. Based on everything we know right now, the established orbital mechanics, there's no immediate collision risk. That's the starting point. Okay, good. Let's... Let's get to know this interstellar intruder a bit better then. What is 3 ILSS scientifically? Where did it come from? Well, it popped up in observations back in July 2025. And right away, it was tagged as a hyperbolic comet. Hyperbolic. That's the key word for interstellar, right? Precisely. It's all about its orbital shape measured by eccentricity. For an object orbiting the sun, like Earth or Jupiter, eccentricity is between 0 and 1. And for 3 ILS. The eccentricity is estimated around 6.1, which is <clears throat> really high. Whoa, 6.1. So what does that actually mean in terms of its journey? It means it's not bound by the sun's gravity. It came screaming in from interstellar space. Initial velocity clocked around 137,000 miles per hour. That's uh, 61 kilometers per second. Oh. And it's just passing through. It'll swing around the sun and head right back out into the galaxy. It's a one-time visitor. Okay. And we're sure it's a comet, not, say, an asteroid like Oumuamua was initially thought to be. Yeah, pretty sure. Hmm. The Hubble Space Telescope got some good looks back in July 2025. And it saw this uh, distinct teardrop-shaped dust cocoon around it. That's the classic signature of outgassing volatile materials vaporizing off the surface as it gets closer to the sun. That says comet. Makes sense. Do we have any idea how big this thing is? Estimates put it somewhere between 10 and 20 kilometers across. And its mass is roughly uh, 10 to the 14 kilograms. So it's a substantial object, not insignificant. Right, which probably fuels some of the worry. Okay, so it's a big, fast interstellar comet on a path that takes it safely past us. But here's where the, let's call it the drama, starts. Mm -hmm. The non-gravitational acceleration. Exactly. What is that, and how much are we talking about here? So non-gravitational acceleration just means some force other than gravity is nudging the comet slightly. Almost always with comets, this, the, the outgassing we just mentioned, the gas escaping acts like tiny, weak rocket thrusters. Okay, like Newton's third law in action. Yep. And the measured acceleration for three IAT lays is about 5.85 times 10 to the minus 5 AU per day squared. Okay, that that number doesn't immediately paint a picture for me. Can you translate that? Sure. It works out to an incredibly small push, about 0 0.023 centimeters per second squared per day. 0 0.023 centimeters per second yeah. per day. That's minuscule. It really is. It's like... Uh, Imagine the force needed to accelerate something by the width of a human hair over the course of maybe an hour or two. It's tiny, but because space is frictionless, even that tiny push, sustained over time, can be measured. Right. 
But some people may be following specific accounts online, like one called at 3 I Atlas Exposed on X. Uh -huh. They're taking that tiny, tiny acceleration and claiming it adds up to a huge course change. They're saying it shifts the closest approach from that safe 1.8 AU down to 1.33 AU. That's a difference of almost 70 million kilometers. Yeah, that's that's a massive leap in interpretation. And they're attributing this to seven jets firing. Right. And that phrasing, jets firing, sounds very deliberate, very controlled. Like engines? Exactly. Yeah. But what do a Astronomers actually see. They see multiple streams of material coming off the comet, which could be interpreted as jets. But this is entirely consistent with uneven heating and outgassing from different spots on the comet's nucleus as it rotates and gets hit by sunlight. It's a totally natural cometary feature. So the jets are real in a sense, but they're just comet sweat, basically, not thrusters. That's a good way to put it, comet sweat. Okay. And crucially, we've seen this before. Remember Tuai Borisov, our second interstellar visitor? Vaguely. It also showed non-gravitational acceleration, actually a bit less than 3 i guys, and it clearly had jet-like activity. But its path didn't significantly deviate from what gravity predicted. It followed its hyperbolic trajectory just fine. Okay, so there's precedent for this acceleration not causing a major turn. Absolutely. Orbital mechanics tells us that the tiny natural push we're seeing with 3 i atas would only cause a very minor deviation over time. Nowhere near enough to lop 70 million kilometers off its approach distance or steer it towards Earth. That requires a much, much bigger force. What about this idea, uh, Avi Loeb mentioned it, I think, that maybe 3i at last fragmented, broke up near the sun. Could that send a piece our way? That's another interesting point. Fragmentation is possible for comets, especially as they get heated near the sun. Loeb suggested maybe 16 or more pieces and noted a big jump in the mass loss rate from like 150 kilos per second up to 2 million kilos per second. Whoa, that sounds dramatic. It is dramatic. And fragmentation could definitely explain multiple jets or streams appearing. But even if it broke up, JPL's models, which are constantly updated, don't show any resulting fragments being on a collision course with Earth. So even a breakup doesn't point towards impact. Not according to the best models we have. If anything, breaking up disperses the mass. You end up with smaller pieces, generally following paths very similar to the original. Okay. But, you know, for the listener out there who really wants to cover all bases, let's explore the what-ifs. We've established natural outgassing isn't steering this thing. What would it take? What kind of factor X could actually make 3 ILS turn towards us? All right. This is important for perspective. To get that claimed course shift, shaving off 70 million kilometers in, what, about 40 days? Yep. You need a significant change in velocity, a delta V, as we call it. How significant? About 1.7 kilometers per second. That's Rah. that's fast, like a rifle bullet speed. Add it to its current velocity vector when you're just right. 1.7 kilometers delta V. Okay, natural outgassing provides what fraction of it? Oh, a tiny, tiny fraction. Orders of magnitude less. So we need something much, much bigger. Okay, let's brainstorm factor X scenarios. Scenario one, a gravitational nudge. Like, maybe it flies close to an unseen rogue planet, or even the hypothetical Planet 9. That's theoretically possible. Gravity can definitely alter paths. We saw Shoemaker-Levy 9 get ribbed apart and deflected into Jupiter by Jupiter's gravity back in 94. Yeah, right. But our current models account for all the known planets very accurately. For some unknown, massive object to just happen to be in the perfect place at the perfect time to give three Itai last that precise 1.7 kilometers kick towards Earth. The chances seem slim. Vanishingly small. Space is just too big and mostly empty. The odds of that kind of perfect gravitational alignment with an unseen body are way, way less than 1%. Probably much lower. Okay. Scenario two, the sci-fi option, it's aliens. It's an alien probe with actual engines. Chuckles lightly. The Umamoya special. Mm. Well, if it were using propulsion to get that 1.7 kilometers delta V over 40 days, you would need a constant acceleration of about 0. 0.00028 meters per second squared. How does that compare to the acceleration we actually see? It's more than 10 times stronger than the tiny 0. 0.000023 milisadillas we measure from the natural outgassing. It'll be obvious. And have we seen any evidence, radio signals, heat signatures, anything SETI might pick up? Nope, zero evidence. Despite people like Avi Loeb keeping the hypothesis alive for interstellar objects in general, there's nothing specific to 3i Atlas suggesting artificial propulsion. So without proof, the probability here is incredibly low, less than 0.1%. All right, back to fragmentation. Scenario three. Maybe it breaks up and one piece gets a lucky kick just right. Okay, so let's say there's maybe a 10% chance the comet fragments significantly. Then one of those fragments would need to get a very specific vector towards Earth. 
maybe from an uneven outgassing burst as it breaks off or radiation pressure acting differently on it. Possible. The kick itself is possible. But hitting Earth, that's the hard part. You're aiming for a tiny target. Earth's cross-sectional area is about 1.3 times 10 or square kilometers. Okay. And you're aiming from potentially millions of kilometers away across the vastness of space, which we could roughly think of as, I don't know, 10 or square kilometers of area at that distance. The odds of one fragment just happening to hit that tiny bullseye. Astronomical odds against it. Exactly. Less than 0.01% chance, easily. It's like trying to hit a specific speck of dust from across a continent. Okay, final factor X, scenario four. Enhance Yarkovsky effect. What's that? The normal Yarkovsky effect is where sunlight heats one side of a rotating object. Yeah. And as that heat radiates away, it creates a minuscule thrust. It's even weaker than the outgassing we see, usually around 10 AU per day squared. Basically negligible for this discussion. So how could it be enhanced? You'd need some really extreme external event, maybe a colossal, perfectly aimed solar flare hitting it, or some unknown intense radiation source suddenly bathing it, amplifying that heating radiation effect dramatically and directionally. Sounds unlikely. Extremely unlikely. There's no known mechanism that could reliably produce that kind of targeted amplified effect to give it a 1.7 kilometers nudge. The probability, again, is less than 0.1%, and that's probably generous. Okay, so we've gone through the actual observations, the known physics, the social media claims, and even the, uh, the wilder factor X possibilities. Where does that leave us? What's the final verdict on the risk from 3A Alice? The bottom line is the non-gravitational acceleration we're seeing is completely normal for a comet. It lines up perfectly with what we saw from 2I Borisov and countless other comets from our own solar system. And the claims of a massive course change. They seem to be a significant overinterpretation of what are likely just tiny residuals in the orbital calculations, the small differences between the predicted path and the measured path, which that tiny outgassing easily explains. So the actual natural probability of a collision. Based on its current trajectory and everything we know, it's minuscule, less than 1 in 10 billion, easily probably much lower, essentially zero for practical purposes. And even if we stack up all those unlikely factor X scenarios, the rogue planet, the aliens, the lucky fragment, the mystery radiation, what's the absolute maximum combined probability? Even if you optimistically combine the highest probabilities we estimated for each of those highly improbable scenarios, the total chance of an impact remains well, well below 0.1% or, or one in a thousand. So the message for you listening is pretty clear then? Yeah. Don't lose sleep over 3i at loss. It's not coming for us. Yeah. You definitely don't need to start building a bunker because of this specific comet. Okay. So if it's not a threat, what is its value? Why is it exciting for scientists? Oh, it's incredibly valuable scientifically. This is a messenger from another star system. Studying its composition, its trajectory, how it behaves as it interacts with our sun. Yeah. It gives us a unique window into what other parts of the galaxy are like. We're basically getting a free sample delivered from interstellar space. Exactly. We get to study matter that formed around a completely different star millions or billions of years ago, potentially hundreds or thousands of light years away. That's amazing. And I assume we'll get even better data soon. Definitely. That close approach on December 19th, 2025, even though it's a safe 1.8 AU away, is a prime opportunity for observation. Instruments like Hubble, James Webb Space Telescope, they'll be watching closely. They'll nail down that trajectory with even more precision. Absolutely. We'll get confirmation of his path and likely learn a lot more about its makeup. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up this deep dive then. We've seen that the interstellar interloper 3ITLS, despite the online buzz, is really just a fascinating but ultimately non-threatening hyperbolic comet. It's set to sail past us safely at about 1.8 AU. The whole seven jets firing narrative is really just natural commentary outgassing that comet's what we talked about being misinterpreted. It's a good reminder that while space is dynamic, astronomers have gotten pretty good at understanding the physics and distinguishing a real threat from uh, natural processes. Mm, and that holds up. So as 3IATLAS continues its journey back out into the void, passing us by, it does leave us with a thought, doesn't it? We know impacts happen. Shoemaker Livy 9 hitting Jupiter was spectacular proof. The Tunguska event in 1908 showed even smaller objects can make a mark. True. Cosmic collisions are part of the solar system's history. So, if this known interstellar object isn't a threat, the real question perhaps is, what about the unknown ones? What other dark, maybe faster interlopers might be out there, passing through undetected? And how do we get better at spotting them before they get close? That's the ongoing challenge for planetary defense, isn't it? Improving our eyes on the sky.
definitely something to think about. Join us next time for another deep dive.